I fall asleep at the exact same time every single night. Now I know that sounds kind of like a flex and it kind of is, but that's a flex that I kind of want you to have too. Before we get started, a uh, quick disclaimer, this is what I do and what works for me might not work for you, but maybe you do some of this stuff. Maybe you do none of this stuff or maybe you do all of this stuff. I have no idea. I just hope that maybe from this video you can pull some value and you know, get to sleep at a decent hour. All right, let's jump in. Oh, mornings. Ever since I can remember, I have been an absolute sloth first thing in the morning. I don't know why, but for the first 10 minutes, there's not a whole lot of movement going on. Now that being said, there is no snooze button. There's no five more minutes, none of that. There's usually five or 10 minutes of me stretching awkwardly just to a point where it kind of feels good, but it also kind of hurts to keep me awake. Usually because I slept on it wrong or yesterday's workout was too hard or something, I don't know. But I do set my alarm for the same time within reason every single day. When I say within reason, it's 5 a.m. every day that I work, 5.30 a.m. every day that I don't work. Kicker is the dogs usually wake me up before that 5.30. As long as it's after five, I'm happy. If it's at like 4.15, I'm not thrilled, but whatever, I love them anyway. Having that roughly same wake up time every single day keeps my circadian rhythm in check and the circadian rhythm in check in the morning will help the circadian rhythm in the evening stay the same. If you have been following me or subscribed to my channels on any social media platform for more than the last 45 seconds, you know I am big into exercise. Right now, I weight train about four days a week. Sometimes I do a little accessory work on another day, but most of the time not. I do always feel much more tired when I go to bed after a big workout because my muscles are just like, oh, thank God, I don't have to move anymore, bye. But even doing some low intensity cardio, that's enough. I get the blood pumping, I get my heart involved, I get my lungs working. Even with that just little more activity than baseline, I get better sleep and I've noticed this in myself and I anticipate you will probably too. For reference on days that I don't lift, it's usually 30 minutes of cardio in the morning and a half an hour walk with the dogs in the evening. Very easily gets to be an hour of cardio, Low intensity, sure, but it's an hour of walking and doing stuff that I otherwise probably wouldn't have. I probably would have been a potato on the couch otherwise. Caffeine is a big problem when it comes to sleep and I personally have a firm rule of no caffeine within six hours of bed. If I can stretch that back farther, I will. The half-life of caffeine is five hours. So okay, what does that mean? That means if you have a cup of coffee, five hours later, half of that caffeine is gone. Five hours after that, that doesn't mean all of the caffeine is gone means 75% of the caffeine is gone. You still have 25% left. Half-lives, kind of cool. It's science. Now everybody's got a different caffeine tolerance. Some people get wired off a cup of coffee. Some people don't. Point is it varies person to person. So keeping caffeine as far away from bedtime as you can, always a good thing. I'll go through more of the physiology in a later video if you guys want it, but I don't have caffeine first thing in the morning unless I'm on my way to the gym. Now, there are a lot of benefits to caffeine before a lift that have nothing to do with just being awake. A lot of people have caffeine in the morning to get themselves awake, and it's kind of useless. The reason we get sleepy in the middle of the day is because we have a buildup of something called adenosine in our brain. Now, you'll remember ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that's the energy we have. Adenosine is a metabolic byproduct that kind of just sits in the brain and binds to these adenosine receptors. The more of these adenosine receptors that are bound to adenosine, the more tired you're gonna be. Caffeine binds these adenosine receptors and blocks the adenosine from getting there. So it prevents you from getting sleepy. So think about that for a minute. First thing when you wake up, there's not a lot of adenosine in your brain. Your brain's been bathed with cerebral spinal fluid for the last, I don't know, eight or so hours. Getting rid of all that adenosine and all the metabolic waste that just builds up in your brain to have you start fresh the next morning. So if there's no adenosine buildup, you don't really need to block the adenosine. So why are you drinking caffeine first thing in the morning? I don't know. Actually, I do know. One, it's a habit. Two, people just enjoy starting their day with a cup of coffee. Fine. Or three, if you don't have a cup of coffee, you get a headache, and that's called withdrawal. On days that I don't work out, my first caffeine is with lunch. I get paid to think all day. Metabolic byproducts build up. Sometimes a little bit of caffeine helps. Moral of the story, keep caffeine as far away from bedtime as possible. You'll have a much easier time getting to sleep. Now, you're probably surprised that I talked a lot about what happens in the first half of the day. Now, here's where the money's made in the evening. Number one, I don't like to eat big meals super close to bedtime. Now I know a lot of you probably think that the closer to bedtime you eat or if you eat after a certain time, you build fat. Guess what? Wrong. Your body does not care what time you actually eat as far as fat goes. It is a weekly caloric average. If you're somebody my size, 6'2", 220, exercises a lot and you eat 2000 calories every day between 8.20 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., you will still lose weight. You're in a caloric deficit. That's just how that works. Part of the problem is people tend to overeat at night because they're tired and their willpower is down. That's a story for a different video. The reason I don't like to eat super late at night is twofold. One, it keeps your core body temperature up. When you sleep, your core body temperature wants to go down. So if you keep your core body temperature up, harder for you to get to sleep. Reason number two, when you have a large meal, not all of it gets digested by the time you lay flat. When you lay flat, you don't have gravity 
pulling everything down out of your stomach into your intestines. So what happens? You lay flat and stuff gets to reflux up into your esophagus, causing you heartburn. When's the last time you've had an easy time falling asleep with heartburn? It's probably been a while. When you're trying to get to sleep, use of screens can be kind of tough. A reliance on screens these days with TV, phone, tablets, really anything. If you get a bright light shining in your eye, tricks your brain into thinking, hey, maybe it's time to wake up right now instead of go to bed. So how do you combat that without just sitting in a dark room for half an hour with nothing to do before you go to sleep? Well, there's a couple different things you could try. One, grab a book, find a yellow light, read by the yellow light. By the way, reading is a thing still. Like people, we read, not just scroll through TikTok aimlessly. Number two, it's helped me. It may not help you, but it's definitely helped me in the past. Blue light blocking glasses. Some people have them and they turn everything bright yellow. I don't love those. The ones I have, you can't really tell the difference until you take them off and compare side by side. Prefer that way. And three, if you don't wanna either read a book or turn a light on to disturb your partner if he or she's trying to sleep, make sure night mode is on whatever screen you've got. Every night at 8.30, I'm on my Kindle, it gets super yellow, and I don't have that like constant attention span thing going on with TikTok. It slows me down, it makes my brain know that, hey, yeah, we are not long for this realm. The final thing, and probably the most important thing I can tell you, is make an actual evening routine. Now, it doesn't have to be anything extravagant, but make sure the same things lead up to going to bed and going to sleep every single night so that when you start that routine, your body will know, hey, at the end of this tunnel is bedtime. For me, at nine o'clock in the evening, it's time for the dogs to go out. I know it, they know it, we get it done. And then it's my evening routine. I brush my teeth, wash my face, just go to bed. You can see how exhausted I look at 9.15 when I'm finished with taking the dogs out in my evening routine. And guess what? I'm out like a light. And that's it. That's how I get to sleep at the same time every single night. It's very simple, but it takes some discipline. It takes some habit forming, and it takes training your body to do what you know it should do as opposed to what it just kind of does. It's taken me a while to develop these habits, sure, but I've developed them and I love them and I will probably not change. If you got some value out of this video, if you found some tips that you could probably implement like today, hit that like button, consider subscribing, it really helps me as I try to grow my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.